stood by my girlfriend through a mental health crisis for over a year. In return she slept with another guy. Around a year ago, a guy went after my girlfriend as she was leaving work. Thankfully, her life was spared, but her assailant did threaten her with a weapon and intimately abused her. The store where she worked had security cameras in the parking lot, and combined with footage from a bank across the street, the perp's car was caught on video. Using the video and DNA evidence, the perp was caught and arrested the next day. The evidence was so compelling that he pleaded guilty to avoid the maximum sentence. Due to the aggravating circumstances surrounding his crime, such as the use of a weapon, the judge handed him a 20-year sentence. With good behavior, he might be out in approximately 10 years. The important takeaway is that her attacker no longer poses a threat. She doesn't need to worry about him for at least a decade. Clearly and understandably, this event was highly traumatic for her. Although I wasn't directly victimized, I also experienced severe trauma. My bouts of depression stem from the guilt of not being able to protect her, coupled with the knowledge that someone else hurt her. In the immediate aftermath of the incident, she did not want to see me. As painful as it was, I understood. Her parents picked her up from the hospital, and for a week, I heard nothing from her. Eventually, her sister contacted me, explaining that my girlfriend was staying with her parents and would call me in a few days. However, she never called. Instead, I received a message from her sister asking me to visit. I was met at the door by her mother, who laid out a set of rules for my behavior and conversation. She also insisted that I not initiate any physical contact. While the conversation was uncomfortable and the environment was cold, I knew they were trying to protect her during her recovery. As I walked in, I found her seated on a chair, her father standing next to her and her sister on the couch. Her sister explained that my girlfriend wanted me to know she was okay, despite her trauma. My girlfriend didn't utter a word, nor did she look at me directly. Shortly after this encounter, I started researching ways to support survivors and what I could expect from the healing process. My girlfriend began therapy, attending two sessions a week initially, before scaling back to once weekly after two months. Around this time, she reached out to me and asked to meet at a coffee shop. I arrived to find her heavily medicated, barely showing any emotion. Her speech was measured and monotone. She told me that we couldn't see each other romantically until she had worked through some issues. This wasn't surprising, as we hadn't spoken privately in the months since the attack. I reassured her that I would be there for her, no matter what she needed. As I started to tell her I loved her, she interrupted me, explaining she didn't want to hear that, got up, and left. Over the next month and a half, we exchanged a few texts and I suggested meeting for dinner. After some hesitation and a discussion with her therapist, she agreed. However, the dinner felt cold. She reacted sharply when I asked her how she was doing, snapping at me not to ask personal questions. Once the meal was over, she quickly left without any conversation. Our relationship progressed slowly. We began meeting once a week for lunch and she started opening up more. Things seemed to be moving in the right direction until one day, she didn't show up for our lunch. I called her parents to make sure she was okay, only to be told not to expect to hear from her for a while. Two weeks later, I reached out to her sister, who revealed that my girlfriend had asked her family not to let me contact her. This news left me devastated, and soon after, my girlfriend asked me to meet her at her therapist's office. When I arrived at the therapist's office, I was brought into a room and saw my girlfriend sitting, emotionless, and avoiding eye contact. The therapist began the meeting by listing a series of do's and don'ts. After she was done, my girlfriend broke down into tears, after which my girlfriend confessed that she'd cheated on me with a man from her new job. I felt blindsided and deeply hurt. The therapist tried to explain this as a way for her to reclaim her intimate identity following the assault. My girlfriend then pleaded with me not to leave her, describing her action as a one-off mistake. The confrontation ended with her in tears and the therapist asking me to leave. I left without a word, but as soon as I stepped outside, I felt the tears streaming down my face. I didn't speak to her for a week. After many missed phone calls and ignored messages, I decided I had healed enough to at least hear her out. Before she could say anything, I flat out told her that for me to even consider going forward with this, she had to cut this other guy off. Period. She told me that it was impossible since they worked together. I wasn't going to give this any thought if she wouldn't comply. Consequently, she decided to find another job. It left me feeling like I was being punished for something I didn't do. She changed jobs and we went back to our routine lunches. After expressing my tiredness of our stagnant routine, she agreed to come over one night to watch TV. She came over and we watched two movies, indulging in pizza during the second. At some point, I attempt to give her a kiss, nothing more. Just a kiss. She recoiled as though I had attempted her life, and she told me she wasn't ready yet. Admittedly, it wasn't my proudest moment, but I couldn't help but tell her that it's been a year and a month. I hadn't pressured her or forced her into anything. Yet she had been intimate with another man months ago while I was still waiting to hold her hand. Naturally, she began crying. I wasn't as quick to apologize this time. I did express regret for my tone and reassured her that I would never force her into anything against her will. However, truthfully, I feel like I've been cheated on and left on the periphery. I don't care about the semantics, she willingly had unprotected intimacy with someone else, and I feel like I've been the supportive boyfriend to no avail. I ask her not to text me until I decide what I'm going to do. I don't want to be unfair to her, but a year is a long time, and we are no closer to returning to normalcy than we were six months ago. I have no idea how long this will continue. I am just tired of the absence of intimacy. I understand not pushing for anything right after the incident, even months after. But it's been over a year, and we're not even holding hands. The fact that she was intimate with another man is yet another thing that hollows me out. I told her that I need time to think things through and promise to talk with her next week. 
but as it stands tonight, I think I'm done. I love her. I despise the idiot who ruined both of our lives. I understand what happened to her wasn't her fault, but to go behind my back and sleep with another man while I wait for her? I'm left feeling used and betrayed. I don't know if I'll be able to get over these emotions, and I need help. If anyone has any advice, please let me know. I feel so overwhelmed.